I am Alex Supertramp. My journals usually speak in third person, but this one is different. I am Alex Supertramp, and I went into the wild. I'm writing this, earth beneath me, starved skin and bone holding this pencil with the readiness to die. The books I have read with authors like Haven David Thoreau and Jack London have given me much insight on my life and how to make sense of things. Therefore, it is explanatory to me, if not anyone else, that I wrote the final page of Louis Lamour's memoir, Education of a Wandering Man, where it quotes Robinson Jeffers' poem about death, to write my final goodbye if not anything else prevails. I lay here sandwiched between the fabrics of my sleeping bag, ill, I am weak, pushed past the point of starvation, and death is my possibility. So I write this final explanation for whoever is concerned about why I decided to go into the wild, and why I am happy knowing my days are close to an end. Well, when trying to answer, I think back to hard times where I still persisted. I remember my first road trip out through the flat Texas terrain, scanning through New Mexico and Arizona, arriving at the Pacific coast. Later, my trip entailed me getting lost in the Mojave Desert. It was blistering hot. It was panic, regrouping, pure curiosity, and pure adventure. In these times, although filled with isolation, challenges, constant duty to survive. What surrounded me was bliss. The feeling of my wandering spirit adventuring and seeking refuge and revelations in nature revitalized me to turn my back on corrupt society as I knew it. Nature offered hard times that I persisted through, like hiking around Lake Mead, where it turned out to be a tremendous mistake because in extreme July temperatures, it becomes delirious. But the lessons I've learned through these hard times, like my regretted failed attempt to cook a moose I had killed, showed me the way to happiness. After realizing a death had been wasted on the poor moose, I fell into remorse, but came out with the conclusion I had discovered the power of deliberate living, which is a conscious attention to the basics of life and a constant attention to your immediate environment. This is where I was reborn, and I discovered that how we relate to things is the measure of their value. The wild related to me as the key to freedom. The urge to ditch my possessions and burn my money accustomed me as I submerged myself more. It was the rivers, the grass, the wind on my skin, the cold gushes that I felt glide on me at night and the wet on my neck as slept rain down from the infinite sky that made me feel real. It was the wild, a race I could not stop. It was survival till death. I had to do this. If not, I would have gone mad. Life sometimes is so decapitating that it takes a part of you, but it also makes a part of you. The wild made a part of me, and that was when I was finally complete. That was when I realized the things needed for a happy life, which are exploration and a companion to share happiness with. In my last final moments, I think of Anza Barrega Desert State Park, where I explored and felt renewed by nature. After I hiked into the land, I slept under the sand under a tarp hung from a crush oak branch. I had walked four miles into town to get my water supply and rice. That's where I met Franz, a companion you shared my happiness with. Thinking back on these endeavors, it is easy to conclude I have filled my time with the ingredients needed for a happy life. So for the question as to why I stepped into the wild, I stepped into the wild because I needed to find that happiness in my soul. That happiness that
that I feel right now.